Hi, Jörg. Welcome to B Magazine booth here at Intersolar. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for being here. Your Q cells as well as a recently moved into top technology. How was that transition? Yeah, I mean, you know, so far our technology was based on quantum technology. That is a perk-based technology. And the next step for us was to go to TopCon, that is based on a passive aid contact, because there the efficiency potential is higher. So therefore, currently we have efficiencies around 25%, and with TopCon, we also think we can increase their efficiency to values well above 26%. And what says the company's technology roadmap for TopCon? What yeah. will uh, arrive? Yeah, I mean, you know, with pure silicon, the higher you get, the, the more difficult it is, and finally you will reach the practical and physical limit. So we are very sure that we can push the efficiency value of TopCon above 26%, but then it's getting very difficult, I guess. Maybe then if you want to increase more, you go to Perskite Silicon because you already installed, are you currently installing a um, production line? Yeah, sure. If you want to overcome the, the physical limit of a silicon solar cell, you have to go to tandem devices. And there we think the next big step would be a tandem device based on perovskite silicon. And therefore we are working very intense to make that as the next big game changer. And when could we see the first products coming to the market? Oh, yeah, so, I mean, currently there are still lots of development topics. I mean, you, you see, we are now at efficiency values together with our research partner like HZB, we have achieved 29.9%. So efficiency-wise, on a small area, it's quite good. But now we have to scale it up to full wafer size, to develop a manufacturer, cost-effective technology, and that takes time. So currently I don't want to make a, a precise date when that will happen, but we work to have that ready as a mass production as soon as possible. Production costs may be challenging for many years in, in this regard. Yeah, but in, in PV production is always cost, yield, throughput, and all that, and that has to be under control before you really can launch a product. And for tandem devices, you know, reliability is also a critical issue. And so also there, that is, that is still uh, a topic under development. We make there very good progress, but still a way to go till we can ensure, let's say, a, a warranty of like similar like silicon, 25%, uh, 25 years or even more. And is Q-Cells currently considering other technologies such as heterojunction or IBC or any kind of BC or back counter technology? I mean, we, we clearly have a close eye on these technologies because, yeah, if you look around at Intersolar, several competitors already launched heterojunction or IBC cells. But we focus more on one technology where we think that's the best from a cost perspective and from an efficiency perspective and there currently we focus on TopCon and so far we don't see there's a really a need to go to IBC or to heterojunction but we are evaluating that continuously and, and see what the future will bring. And also with new technologies scale is important I mean do you think also increasing capacities may help the technology become more mature or are you betting more on increasing the efficiency? rather than capacities? No, I mean, you, clearly you need a certain capacity to have all the scaling effects. And if you look in the past, the bigger part of the cost reduction was based on more efficient mass production, scaling effects and so on. So that was the bigger part for cost reduction. The other big part was efficiency. So both parts are important and we are clearly working on both. So it's and a combination of both factors. Sure, sure, sure. So and it's always the efficiency, and the efficiency is an important one because all the area-related costs scale directly with the efficiency. But then also material consumption, silver consumption, throughput, yield, and all the other materials, their scaling is, is quite important. q -Cells has also presented some new products here at um, Intersolar. Yeah, sure. If you look at our booth, so Module-wise, we presented there our new module based on TopCon technology. We call it uh, Kuton G2. Yeah. 
that is our new product that we, we launched this year. And let's say, let's make a forecast for 2030. How do you see Qcells by that date? It's doing mostly TopCon or maybe just switching to other technologies? I mean, I, I also guess you also make us sort of uh, these assumptions. Yeah, sure. I mean, PV is a very fast industry. The development is quite rapidly. So a prediction seven years ahead is it's very challenging. Yeah, but as I said, we are working intensively on tandem development, tandem products, and I'm very, very convinced that in 2030, there we will see tandem products on the market. So do you mean this is very, as a CTO, you can guarantee that this is something that we will see on the market? I, I mean, know, I mean, it's, 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 as I said, it's under development, so guarantee, guarantee it's not, because then we should have the product already. So, but there's a high probability, and therefore we're investing a lot in this technology. But of course, a market in which we will see modules with, with the 28, 27% efficiency will be completely different. Yeah, sure, sure, the market, uh, but the efficiency, I mean, in the past, if you look seven years back or even more, when I started QCells, the efficiency was at 14%, uh, 14 and now we are at a cell efficiency at 25%, and so I think technology will improve in the future. We will not stick at a certain level and PV, I mean fundamentally, if you look how to convert sunlight into electricity, the, 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 the basic physical efficiency limit is well above 50%. And so therefore, the engineers and the technicians, we will find ways to improve the efficiency even above 30%. I'm very convinced. Thank you much for being here. Ah, thank you, it was a pleasure.